Hello everyone, welcome back to Venkana English Guru. Friends, we are actually talking about American literature. As a part of American literature, where we had introduction towards American literature, periods of American literature, we are talking about history of American literature, where we discussed the colonial period, 607 to 1775, early national period, 1765 to 1865, and the realistic period, 1865 to 1900, and naturalistic period, 1900 to 1914. Friends, in this video, we are actually talking about the modern period of American literature. Who are the popular American writers during, after, from 1900 to 1945, during the World War I and World War II? And who are the popular important dramatists, novelists, and poets, and popular critics of the time? And what were the popular incidents that influenced these American writers? to compose a lot of literature and what were the what were the major themes of writing literature of the time from 1900 to 1945 these are the major important things that we are talking about in this video and you can check so friends see the moment you talk about the american literature modern period from 1914 to 9 the beginning of world war ii the era between the two world wars you know friends we also discussed the impact of World War I and World War II as a part of uh, history of English literature, like World War I, 1914 to 18, and World War II, 1939 to 44, and how they actually influenced people and religion or race or region or the world. And we had a lot of discussion with regard to uh, history of British literature. Here, the same, more or less the same, but some specific. So the era between the two world wars marked, uh, marked by the trauma of the Great Economic Depression. Yes, the period 1930s where we discussed the uh, what we say economic period, depression, <coughs> depression of the world, Great Economic Depression, mainly the 1930s. That's what th there is a group like that is led by W. H. Harden, W. H. Davis, Cecil D. Lewis, where we discussed previously. Beginning in 1929 was that of the emergence, what is still known as modern literature. So the economic depression of 1930s, the period between the two world wars, which is considered to be the modern period and poetry. There was a magazine in American literature and the title is Poetry. Very, very popular, my friends, remember. So Poetry magazine founded in Chicago, very, very important. In the net examination, you will get a bit like this. This magazine is started by, and this and the following book is first published in, later published in in America first, in US first, in UK first. Like that, you will get. And who actually founded the poetry magazine? And the verb bits once you go through the previous papers. So the magazine poetry, which is actually founded by Harriet Munro very, very important in 1912, published many innovative authors. This is the magazine of American literature where it actually brought a number of poetry, a number of collections of poetry and uh, drama or fiction and uh, in after 1912, which is founded by Harriet uh, Munro. Next friends, and the notable poets of the time. So who were the popular poets during this period? And who were the very, very important writers like Edgar Lee Masters. And uh, the writers were Edgar Lee Masters, Edwin Arlington Robinson, and Robert Frost. Very, very important. And this age is also called the age of Robert Frost. Very, very innovative writer and who, very known for uh, dramatic lyrics like Once Home Burial or Road Not Taken. And if you read the poetry, and his poetry is located in a particular place like New Hampshire. So this was uh, repeated bit in the different examinations. And Carl Sandburg and Wallace Stevens, another popular writer, William Carlos Williams and Ezra Pound, very, very important companion of T.S. Eliot. And uh, I'll, I'll talk about next uh, Robinson Jeffords and Marianne Moore. T.S. Eliot, my friends, remember T.S. Eliot and uh, the American writer born in 1888, okay, at Mississippi, and Edna St. Vincent Millet and E. Cummings, 
authors who wrote in an unexampled variety of poetic modes. These were the writers who wrote a lot of poetry which impacted the world. You know, the poetry that is actually composed by T.S. Eliot, poetry like uh, The Wasteland, which actually talks about a lot of issues. So the popular writers, Robert Frost and Ezra Pound, Wallace Stevens, T.S. Eliot, very, very popular poets of American literature during the modern period. Next, friends, when we talk about important features included and what kind of poetry was actually composed by these poets of American literature. So, and their poetry was all about imagism, very, 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 very important. And poetry, imagism, impressionism, Dadaism, existentialism, and absurdism, like there were many theories where we had a little bit of introduction towards them. And during this period, most of the American poets, they composed literature and poetry that is connected with imagism. So literature is a combination of images. So poetry, just like an image, it's a speaking picture. That is what uh, the point that is actually connected by, said by Ezra Pound, Hilda Doolittle, Amy Lobel. That is why, friends, this imagism, which is also called amigism. Amigism, which means this came out with the name like Amy Lobel, Hilda Doolittle and others. Metric poems. During this period, metric poems were popularized by Robert Frost. So very, very important one. Who is the originator of metric poetry and who used a lot of metrices, meters, as you know, <coughs> I am the canopistic, trochee, dactylic, the process of using different styles, different varieties in terms of using prosodic features. And the free words poems, friends, as I told you, free words, the Wexland is composed in free words. Who introduced free words? What is the other name of these free words? Where did T.S. Eliot uh, uh, derive this, the concept of free words? Like there were many bits, my friends. Free words poetry, which is composed by Williams in American literature, William, Carlos Williams, like, and the formal and typographical experiments of Cummings, E. A. Cummings. And Cummings is known for formal, typographical, the process of using different spellings, the process of violating deliberately. Okay. So these types of poetry was composed by Cummings, the poetic naturalism by Jeffords, and the assimilation of their own distinctive uses by Pound, Ezra Pound. So Ezra Pound is known for using, adapting, bringing number of innovative changes in terms of poetry, mainly in modern period of American literature, my friends. Very, very important. You may get a bit who introduced metric poems. Metric poems is known for, introduced by, or free words poetry was popularized in American literature, or else assimilation of uh, distinctive use of poetry, which is popularized by. Like that, you will get plenty of bits. You need to have, remember all these. Next, Eliot, my friends, remember. Very, very important writer, T.S. Eliot. And I will have plenty of lectures. We'll have plenty of lectures on T.S. Eliot. Don't have any tension. This is just like a very introduction, a kind of thing. Eliot uh, of the forms and procedures of French symbolism. One sec. One second, guys. We'll come back. <coughs> okay, sorry. So, T.S. Eliot, who is so popular for a very important uh, techniques like French symbolism. T.S. Eliot, who adapted concept like symbolism. Sim symbolism. Who, is, who are the popular symbolists where we discussed Charles Baudelaire, Arthur Rimbaud, Paul Berlin, Pal Valery. So there were plenty of writers and who used the symbolism, but the concept of symbolism first actually popularized in French. And this is adapted into English literature, American literature by the popular writer Eliot. Very, very important. Mixed with intellectual and figurative methods of English metaphysical poets. Okay, friends, and he is known for different techniques like dissociation of sensibility and uh, objective correlative. He also employed another technique like objective correlative. Expatriates. So expatriate, ESP, which means 
these three writers are considered to be expatriates t s eliot and uh, get to stain ezra pound so i have used a small code you can remember the following writers are actually called expatriates so eliot spencer sorry <coughs> t s eliot get to stain ezra pound and he is so popular for publishing most of his works in two different uh, magazines the criterion and the dial very very important <coughs> sorry guys next remember and the major writers of the prose fiction who were the popular uh, fiction writers of the time edith wharton sinclair lewis edith wharton and the major important writer sinclair lewis and ellen glasgow and villa cathop gertrude stein very very important the expat one of the expatriates who actually expatriates means these were the writers who believed that there was no future in america if if they go on writing literature in america so in in terms of progress in their own life they started traveling around the world and they believed that west west and britain is the only place where you have a lot of name and fame and money in your life hence they left america and they traveled first to different parts of the europe and first they settled in french and paris and again they came back to london so those were the writers after staying for such certain years again they went back to america so those were the important writers who were considered to be the expatriate there were number of works in support of those writers in uh, against those writers and one of those expatriates was gertrude stein sherwood anderson john dos passos f scott fitzgerald william faulkner you know the popular writer of the time the sun also rises very popular critic on the expatriates ernest hemingway another important writer and thomas wolf and john steinbeck a very popular novelist of 20th century of american literature my friends <coughs> american american produced in this period its first great dramatist and eugen o'neil you know friends most of you you might have read the popular work like the hairy ape the hairy a very very popular drama that is actually produced by and eugen o'neil the popular and uh, nobel laureate a group of distinguished literary critics that included van wyck brooks malcolm cowley t s eliot edmund wilson and the irreverent and caustic and h l mencken literary critics of american literature the popular critics of like we have as part of the modern period of british literature which is also called the age of criticism in the same way during this period in the modern period of american literature there were popular critics and one of the critics was you know t s eliot apart from these were other critics of american literature who wrote a lot of criticism on various issues <coughs> and friends you know the judge age several times the concept of judge age is associated with american literature remember this so the flamboyant and pleasure seeking 1920s are sometimes referred as the jazz age 1920 this is considered to be the jazz age who called this jazz age who coined the word this jazz age these are very very important this title is actually popularized by f scott fitzgerald and who composed a popular work like tales from the jazz age and from this work the word the jazz is actually coined by f scott fitzgerald remember so jazz is actually coined by f scott fitzgerald in the work tales from jazz age 1922 mainly the period from 1912 to 1922 is actually considered to be jazz age there is a close connection between jazz age and harlem renaissance very very important my friends remember okay this is f scott fitzgerald's tales from jazz age next harlem renaissance my friends there is a close connection between jazz age and harlem renaissance renaissance the you, you need to have the first definition that you have read already as a part of renaissance in english literature 
the same decade was also known as also the period of the Harlem Renaissance. So this decade, 1910 to 1920, 1912 to 1922, mainly this very, very important. Several times, because what do you want? You want information, knowledge. You also want marks. This is what you require. So judge is. 1912 to 22. Harlem Renaissance, 12 to 22. Next, so Harlem Renaissance, which produced major writings in all literary forms. These were the popular writers who are actually considered to be Harlem Renaissance experts, which means these were the writers who spoke about the concept of independence, freedom, individuality by writing literature during this period. So they thought that your emotions, your freedom, your thoughts, your individuality can be expressed not only through poetry but also through music, melodious voices. And they came forward and, and at a crossroad like and they went on playing a number of songs. So Count Tickelin, Langston Hughes, the popular one, Claude McKay and Jean Tuma and Jora Neil Hostin, very, very popular writers, my friends. These are considered to be Harlem Renaissance group experts. You may get a bit who are the who of the following and is not related to Harlem Renaissance. Related to Harlem Renaissance. So very, very important. County Quillen, Longston Hughes, Claude McKay, Jean Tuma, Jora Neil Hostin. Very, very important, my friends. Next, many prominent American writers of the decade following the end of World War One delusion by their war experiences. So during this period, literature was all about experience of the war, illusions about the war, and alienated by what they perceived as the and crassness of American culture and its puritanical repressions out of tag first applied by Gertrude Stein to young Frenchmen of the and as the lost generation. That is what my friend Gertrude Stein, who is also considered to be expatriates, are also called lost generation. Because of the war, people, by looking, for example, if there is a war in your village, what do you do? You leave the village, you go out. In the same way, World War I, what happened in America? And uh, most of the youngsters, most of the intellectuals, they migrated from America to other part of the world, mainly to the Europe. That is why, and they felt that America is just like a, a delusion. It's a very imaginary world where we don't have any progress, any life, any future for us. So what to do? Where is the future? Maybe the future can be in Europe. Hence, they migrated to the particular place. And some of the intellectuals like Gertrude Stein, Edra Pond, Wallace Stevens, William Faulk Faulkner, many writers migrated from USA to UK and other parts of uh, European world. That is why these were the writers who felt that US, USA, US was not a place for future and they were called by the localites like uh, F. F. Scott Fitzgerald, Wallace Stevens, William Faulkner and other writers. They, made a, they used a word like uh, the lost generation, mainly the three ESP, T.S. Eliot, Gertrude Stein and Ezra Pound. A number of these writers became expatriates that's what I've been talking about. The writers who thought that there was no future. America, it just like a crassness of American culture. And they felt that and it's a, there is a kind of delusion in America. And, and one of them who believed that and uh, get to stain and who was also called lost generation. So a number of these writers became expatriates. Mainly three, ESP. Elliot, Stein, Pound. And these were these became expatriates moving either to London or to Paris. They left America, left New York, left Washington, left Mississippi, and migrated to other parts of the world because they felt and because, because the war created a kind of mental disturbances on these writers. And a quest for a richer literary and artistic milieu and a freer way of life. These were the major issues, major objectives of these expatriates. So what were? They moved either to London or Paris and quest for richer literary life. Because if we stay in America, we are not going to have good life. Okay, so that's what. And artistic milieu. And because they wanted to have artistic exposure where they can meet a lot of writers. English meant, literature meant, 
UK, London or Paris, people thought in 1920s and 30s. Hence, these people in, in terms of quest for knowledge, quest for rich and milai, quest for literary exposure, they migrated to either London or Paris. And freer way of life, because in America, where life is controlled, but whereas in European world, people felt that life is free to most of the uh, people. And Ezra Pound, Gertrude Stein, T.S. Eliot. <coughs> These were the major writers who lived abroad, mainly from American. But most of the younger exiles, Malcolm Cowley, called them exiles written. So Malcolm Cowley, who wrote exiles written, to make comment on these migrated writers, either to London and another important text, The Sun Also Rises, another work on these expatriates written by Henry Stemingway. And Tedder is the night written by Scott Fitzgerald and uh, represent the mood and way of life of two groups of American expatriates. So the two important groups and these important expatriates and were commented in these important works. Very, very important, my friends, you will get a bit in the following work, Ezra Pound was made comment, commented, criticized, or T.S. Eliot was made a comment on this, the following novel, the following work, like that. You, you may, you have to remember these works. Next, very, very important, another important uh, concept in the Radical Thirty or 1930s. In the Radical Thirties, the period of the Great Depression, this is actually called 1930, is actually called Great Depression. Economic de Depression, Great Depression, 1930s poets, like there are number of names, Great Depression of the economic and social reforms, very, very important. This is called economic revolution, social revolution. So this is actually led by the popular poet W.H. Auden, W.H. Davis, Cecil D. Lewis. So many important writers. New Deal inaugurated by the president Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Some authors joined radical political movements and many others dealt in their literary works with pressing social issues of the time. So, during this period, a lot in American literature. In the novel, the popular writers who spoke about the economic depression in terms of novel, in terms of poetry, William Faulkner. The popular writer was William Faulkner and John Doss and Passos. James T. Farrell, Thomas Wolfe, John Steinbeck in drama, Eugene O'Neill and Clifford Auditz and Max Anderson, the popular dramatist who wrote literature on the economic depression of 1930s. This is what my friends, I think uh, this is, yeah. This is what I wanted to talk about in this video, my friends. Like, and the same thing, like our videos, share our videos, to your friends and classmates who require, who want to have some particular knowledge of American literature. And uh, we'll talk about the contemporary period in our next class. See you guys.